Got the laptop working, guys. We're in business today. How are we looking? We all synced up? How, how we got camera B working? The mix cam working? Ooh. Ooh, mix cam is looking good. Look at that. Plug, Hadeon, never normal. Titan. Hadley. Look at that. And of course, vaping the best juice in the game. My own juice. Let's see, we got the split working. Oh man, how fun is that, huh? How fun is that? All right, what's up everyone? What is up? What is going on? Hey, thank you so much for the follow. What's going on, peeps? All right, we're back on track. Let's go back to camera A. What is going on everyone? Welcome to Live Mixing Happy Friday. I hope you all have enjoyed all of the content that has come out of DIY or Die this past week. Um, a lot of good stuff. Flavor Art video was out yesterday. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's 30 minutes long. It's a long episode, but I did my best to make it entertaining all the way through. There's a lot of little fun little vlog sections in between where we're just doing goofy stuff and um, yeah, it was a fun video to put together. I think I'm getting better at my editing because that video, believe it or not, was so impromptu. So I had plans on filming flavor art when I was there just because why not, right? I figured you guys want to see it. This is what I do. I film stuff. We talk about it. And, um, as soon as we got there, I quickly realized like I wasn't going to get a lot of time to film so we have to start going we're just gonna have to turn the camera on and go and i didn't have any like microphone setups i didn't bring any um for like the first like we did the the first day was like a big tour and um i i i'm pissed because i really wanted to mic up sean but i didn't bring any of my um, of my mics and i only had the on-camera mic and the on-camera mic wasn't wasn't quite set up to be an on-camera mic so I was able to kind of just use that as a montage, which worked out well anyway, because a lot of it's just like, you know, mumbo jumbo technical equipment. You know, they have a GCMS thing. They have, um, you know, a lot of here. here's our uh, process of cleaning. You know, we have to cl clean this place three times a day or two times a day. Um, here's where we put the VG and it's just a big can of VG. And this is where we type in the thing. Essentially. In the uh, montage, you'll see like a computer screen where we're like pointing at it. It's pretty cool. It's essentially this gigantic mixing apparatus. So one system has the required flavorings that's needed um, or raw materials. Another system um, is the, the propylene glycol and it's set up all remotely. So someone can just say, okay, boop, 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 put this in, send this over to the system the system knows that it needs this certain weight, it needs this certain thing, and then it basically just spouts it out underneath and they fill the jugs underneath those big like silver can things. And I was thinking like, damn, I would love to have just a miniature version of that that's just hooked up to all of my flavorings that I own, right? Just like little wires coming out of each and every single one of these flavorings into just one automated system where I can just type in a recipe on all the flavors, press enter, and then it just spits out the recipe that I need. That would be so fucking prime because it would just eliminate 99% of the time it takes to mix. All the most, mostly when you're mixing, all of the development is behind a keyboard, right? It's all in your brain. It's behind a keyboard. It's not the actual act of mixing. It's not like painting where you have to actually paint and there's you know some sort of skill involved when uh, producing the work with mixing it. All the skill it takes place before you actually produce it. Um, so if you could eliminate all of that useless time, you know, I, there was so, so many times where I was thinking like 
I should just hire someone to just mix these recipes for me. I just tell them what recipes to mix. They just spend all day mixing it. And um, we'll be, we'd be able to just, I'd be able to crank out so many more recipes. But uh, I don't have that system. I'm not even sure if a system like that is even possible. Because it's just like hundreds of these little bottles. Um, but it would be cool. It would be cool. That would be my dream setup. If anyone wants to pay me to do that. Um, I promise you a, a good recipe every week because I would just crank out hundreds a day <laughs> So you'd have at least one really good recipe a week. It probably uh, Yeah, that would be that was just something I was thinking about um, But yeah, what's up everyone before we begin? I do want to do some plugs if you enjoy the work that I do and you want to support me and you want to support DIY or die and you want to support videos like the one that I did with flavor art the best way to support me is by purchasing my one shots over at liquidbarn.com. Head over, head over there, head over to flavors, click DIY or die, and you can pick up my DIY or die tastemaker one shots, quick watermelon, king's custard, salt and pétion, delicious one shots. You get a strawberry malted milk, uh, a watermelon, like a really nice, fresh, juicy watermelon. Uh, king's custard is like a butterscotch custard, and salt and pétion is a blood orange champagne. All delicious. You can get them for $4.99 if you want to try them out, which is literally the lowest price that you can get anything in vaping in terms of juice. It'll mix you up 150 mill milligrams or milliliters, I'm sorry, um, at the least. So check that bad boy out. If you want to spend 10 bucks, then you can mix up 30 mils of it, which should get you around 300 mils. So considerably more for just a little bit more. That's the best way to support me. I also have one shots over at eSigExpress.com. You head over there. Go down to where is it? I always I I'm never good at finding it. One shots DIY or die, and you can have your pick of my Enyal Rec Law one shots. Tons here: Blackout Bronuts, Cuprian, Funfetti, Honey Dewy, Milk Boy, Misty Obsidian, Pistachio RY for you. All very delicious one shots. Rose Milk, of course, can't forget that. Um, these are 9.99 for 30 mils, and that'll mix you up around 300 milliliters. Very very cheap. Also, right now, I believe it's starting now. It's either starting now. Um, or in a little bit, but if you use the code one shot 20 one shot 20 at e Express You get 20% off of your one shot order only on one shots for this weekend I'm gonna make a post on it on Instagram if you forget But I'm letting you guys know now if you enjoy one shots and you want to pick some more up Here's a code one shots 20 all one word and uh, that'll get you 20% off only at e Express e Express is awesome. They always have sales. So if you want to save even a little bit more, like if I'm not saving you enough money, right, and you need to save even more money, then just wait for a sale because they always have great sales going on. And then, of course, over at Chef's Flavors, if you are in the UK or the EU, you can pick up my Enyal Reclaw One Shots, the same ones that I sell over in uh, e -Sig Express, as well as some from Liquid Barn over in the UK and the EU. Chef'sFlavors.co.uk, pick them up. They're around the same price, $9.99. Uh, these go for seven pound 50. And um, yeah, they'll mix you up the same amount. You get 30 mils, mix you up around 300 milliliters of juice for seven pound 50. You can't beat that. Very, very cheap. You have all of the classics, even the new ones like Water Malone from the Tastemakers. You get Rose Milk from EC ECX. And then of course, Rhoda Knight, Pistachio ROI for you. You even get a layer in here. You get Elizabeth's Custard layer. And uh, an exclusive, which isn't in the U.S. at all, Dragon Mousseau, which is a dragon fruit champagne. So in Liquid Barn, there's the Blood Orange Champagne. In the U.K., you can get the Dragon Fruit Champagne. Um, and that's where you get that. So, yeah, that's the best way to support me. You can also head over to my website, DIYRDiveVaping.com, and sign up for a membership, which gets you exclusive access to everything on the site. And uh, that's how I keep things moving. That's how I keep things funded. And um, yeah, if you enjoy that stuff, if you enjoy what I do, that's the best way to support me. Congrats on your 50K, says Pippa DIY Down Under. Thank you so much. It's been a long, long ride, long journey. And um, it's all thanks to you guys. It's, it's thanks, thanks to you guys. You know, you guys are the ones signing up and, and uh, consuming the content. I wouldn't be making it if no one was watching it. That's for sure. Some people might say that, like, I I do I make this stuff because I love it, and I I would do it even if no one watched. 
not me. I love the fact that you guys enjoy the content and keeps me going. Means I'm doing something right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Another thing, very, very important. There's two things. There's two things that are very important. I'm going to get this one out of the way because it's, it's kind of a bummer. It's kind of a bummer. Um, one of our good friends recently, we, I've recently found this out. I don't know exactly when he announced this, but it was brought to my attention only a couple days ago and I reached out to him, but it was brought to my attention that our good friend kind ground, um, he got sick, man. He got sick. Uh, where's the link here? Um, he has esophageal cancer. Kind Ground, you guys probably seen him on the Noted Show. He's been a mixer for a long time, longtime critic of mine. But I love the guy. He does a lot for the DIY community. He's always he's always on the subreddit. He's always helping helping people out over there. He's always got something to say. But uh, he he he's a fun person to have in the community. And um, yeah, when I heard this, I was uh, it sucks because. If you read the story here over on his uh, GoFundMe, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, it seems like it, the news came to them right after they found out that his, uh, I believe it was his, was it his wife that uh, got cancer and then she was able to overcome it and then he was diagnosed with it um, a few years later. Um, so it's kind of a shame, it's kind of a bummer, but he has this GoFundMe up here and I think what we're going to do, we're going to try to, we're going to try to, uh, re reach this goal. We're going to try to reach this goal for kind ground. The cancer seems to be pretty bad. Um, they, they didn't give him very good odds. Um, but they never do, you know, whenever, whenever someone's like diagnosed with cancer, they always kind of give him like the worst of the worst outcomes. I guess they do that to kind of, to kind of keep people just hopeful and keep them trying to fight. You know what I mean? But um, they gave him the, uh, the worst of the worst odds. So it's a pretty aggressive cancer. Let me make sure it's, it's esophageal cancer. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, he, they, they found a tumor in his esophagus where it meets his stomach. Um, there's a lot more, there's a lot more um, chemo and therapy that needs to be done to try to treat the cancer. Unfortunately, it's, it's going to continue to grow, it seems like from what he's saying but the best thing that they can do is just to treat it and try to give him as much time with his family as possible and that's kind of what this gofundme is for it's to help pay for whatever he needs it's to help buy him some time you know what i mean it's to help buy him some some time some extra time with his family kind of lift some of the financial burden off of them you know dealing with dealing with another cancer i can only imagine the type of the type of bills that comes with that. He says in the in the GoFundMe that he has good insurance, but even then, you know, you just there's so many extra little costs that I'm sure pop up that just really put a damper on things. So with him being such a such a such a figure in the DIY community, I only think it's appropriate for us to help him out and to try to get him to uh, let's try to reach this goal for him. You know, just try to help him and his family out. And and uh, he's a proud man. He's a proud man, and I can. I'm sure, you know, this type of, uh, this type of attention, he, he, you know, might make him a little bit uncomfortable, but I want to be able to make sure that we can provide for him just a little bit of extra time. If nothing else, just a little bit of extra time with his family, just help him out a little bit. So I think what we're going to do is a mix-a-thon. I think we're going to do a mix-a-thon, try to raise some money for him. There's going to be a ton of prizes. There's going to be a ton of giveaways. We're going to basically raffle all of these giveaways off the way you're going to do it. You're going to donate. Um, you're going to don't, I don't know exactly all the specifics. We haven't worked everything out. We're basically just gathering up prizes now to try to get people just some incentives, um, to, to donate a little extra. So, uh, we're still in the works of like putting it all together, but, um, just know that we're going to be doing something for kind ground and we're going to try to try to help him reach this goal. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. There's no date set. There's no specific set right now. I'm pretty sure we're going to host it on this channel. And, um, the idea is to have all of the DIY shows to kind of come together and do a different sort of mixathon where one show does a show for however long 
and then the next show comes on and then they do their show for however long so on and so forth until um, all of the shows have gone through and hopefully in that allotted time we can um, reach that goal whatever we can get you know whatever we can get up there so that's the plan so far I don't we no one has nailed anything down though so things can change it can be a different format I just I do know there's a lot of companies that um, they're given prizes they're given some really cool prizes so if nothing else you know it's a good chance to, to win some prizes but uh, it's probably gonna be where you donate I forget what they said. I think it was like every five bucks. This is what Frank Randazzo said. I was, I've was i been speaking to him about it. Um, he's been talking with Tammy Vapes and putting a lot of this stuff together. But uh, the idea is every $5 donate, every $5 you donate gets you a raffle ticket. So you can put as much money as you, as, as you want in and that'll give you as many raffle tickets as possible. And um, that'll hopefully... Uh, get people to to go the go a little extra with their donations so we can reach this goal because again man this this type of stuff is just it i can only imagine and it's in it's in the u.s where you know it's the, the our health system here is not it's not the best it's not the best and it's probably the most expensive in the world so i just want to buy him some time i just want to buy him some time i want to be able to kind of alleviate some of that alleviate some of that worry off of him you know there's enough stuff he's got to worry about i don't the last thing he needs to worry about is like how are we going to pay for this thing you know it's a it's a lot of money that's uh that the goal is set for but i do think we can raise it and if we do raise it then you can you can just bet that the guy can uh just a little bit extra less worry on his part and he can worry about just focusing on getting better and trying to trying to beat this thing man trying to beat this cancer is such a bitch it's like the the most bitch disease out there, you know, it's the most bit. It just kind of sneaks up on you. And it's just like, it's, it's just a bitch. It's a bitch. Nothing you can do except just really, really go through all of whatever the doctor said, like the chemo and the radiation and the, and the, the pills that you have to take. And it, it, it can't, you can't just like, you know, die your way out of certain cancers, you know? It's a it's a process that's very expensive, very time consuming. So hopefully, we can help the guy out. We can help the guy out. And he, I, I I from what I know, he's planning on still doing the shows and 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 doing as much as he can in DIY. You know, he's not he's not stopping at all. You're gonna see more of him. You're gonna see him around. Um, I don't want anyone to think that he's gonna kind of disappear for a little while. That's not the case. He he plans on fighting this up front, doing everything that he can to. Um, try to overcome this and then also keep mixing man keep mixing and spreading the word of diy hopefully like i said about jim from um the the facebook group who passed away recently if you are someone who is in vaping you have an opportunity to make sure that no one else can get into a habit that is so deadly and if you can just stop one person and in spe specifically in DIY, if you can stop one person from going back to cigarettes by getting them into a fun, creative hobby and keeping them, you know, uh, entertained with all of the fun mixing stuff that we do, if you can do, if you can stop one person from doing that, then that's 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 mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. And I'm sure Kind Ground feels the same way, and that's why he he plans on, you know. Um, sticking around and, and helping us out there. So I don't want to dwell too much on it. Because, uh, like I said, we don't have all this, all of the specifics down. I'm gonna post the GoFundMe. I'm sure some someone already did, but I'm gonna post the GoFundMe now in the chat. So I'm gonna drop them on both chats, the the one here and in the one in Twitch. If anyone, uh, oh, that's not the right one. I'm sorry. Um, how do I do it? How do I do it from here? Oh, you know what I can do. I can do it here. Oh, DIY down under? No, that's not it either. Give me one second. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the uh, the link here. You can donate now. Just know that whatever you donate, save whatever receipts that you have, so we can get you your raffle tickets. Um, I can't promise everyone that donates before we announce before we announce it all. All, everything will be accounted for but just save whatever you have and we'll do our best to make sure that you can get your tickets 
Um, I don't know where it is. Give me one second. I have to go into Frank's thing. I have it here. Okay, here it is. I got it here. Yeah, thank you, Pippa. There it is, everyone. If you want to drop some cash in there. It's already getting donated to, as you saw. There's people already donating to it. Um, so it should be cool, man. It, 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 hopefully we can uh, help the guy out. This is one of the things that we've seen in vaping many times. We've seen people lose their homes and the vaping community rises to the occasion and gets, you know, reaches whatever goal that GoFundMe set up for. Um, Jay Hayes just recently lost a daughter and then he they were able to go fund the funeral, I believe. I believe, I remember seeing something like that. And I'm pretty sure they reached the goal there. I mean, the VIPing community definitely comes together in times like this. And this is, a, this is one where, you know, this is a, res a well-respected member of the community who's done a lot for everyone. And um, it's only it's only right. It's only right. Okay, the next thing. The next thing. The Make the Switch project. This is another competition. Um, I spoke about this over on Phil Basardo's channel on the Smoker Show with him and Dimitri, the vaping Greek. And it's a program that essentially the idea is to create products that are going to convert smokers into vapors because it seems to be uh, a consumer base that's been left out of vaping for a long time that conversion that those conversion products they they uh, what's there what is there jewel you know what i mean sig likes that's about it so flavor art the reason why they brought me over there was to chat about this project with phil and dimitri and uh the project is it's it's very simple it's a diy competition where they end the end uh, result of it is two products, a traditional tobacco, so one that is similar to a cigarette that can emulate a cigarette and help bridge the gap between smoker and vapor, and then a flavor tobacco. And uh, so you're, there's essentially going to be two winners. There could be one winner, but essentially two winners um, where your, your recipe will be turned into that product. Along with that, there are there's a prize. You're going to get $5,000 cash if your recipe is chosen, as well as some other uh, swag that I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe like the entire flavor art line and, um, you know, there could be further business opportunities that come of that with that, um, with that winning. So essentially I'm judging the first round. This is going to be done in two rounds. The first round Everyone's going to submit their recipes to the Flavor Art website. There's going to be a Flavor Art website where it, uh, you, you post your link, uh, your ELR link over there for your recipe. That's where I'm going to go look for the recipes and test those recipes out, mix them up, vape them, see which ones I think are the best. And then I'm going to choose three people up from, from those, those entries who are going to move on to the second round. The second round will consist of those three winners as well as I think 14 already pre-selected mixers that will be competing. And then I get into the competition and I will comp be competing with you all. So anyone who's ever wanted to mix against me, now's your chance. Um, and then we all, all of us are going to fight for the top spot, which is that $5,000 cash and then a couple other prizes and then so on and so forth. And then all of those winners as well, um, those three winners, you all get $500. Let me get the exact the exact prizes because I just got it recently. Give me one second here. You will get all three of those winners that I pick in the first round get $500 each. Uh, Inikin has a bunch of prizes for you. Inikin is sponsoring it with the uh, Z platform, the Z coil platform. This is the Z beep which is a new product that they released. It uses the Zenith coils, and uh, you're gonna get a bunch of Inikin stuff, as well as $500 cash, and also, um, and then that's it. And then the, the round two, you win um, $5,000, as well as a ton of other Inikin stuff as well. So the $5,000, that's a, that's a big old chunk of change, man. That is not, that's not, a, that's not a little bit of money, right? That's a lot of money. So it's the first time we're having a competition 
where there's a big old prize on the line, a big old prize online, and you bet your bottom dollar I'm coming for it. I'm coming for that prize. So if you think you can mix against me, you're going to be going against me and a bunch of other pre-selected mixers who Flavor Art already has a relationship with. So one of the criticisms that I've had uh, in competitions before, you know, some people say, you never look at the little mixer, the unknown mixer. You pick, you always pick the same sort of people in these uh, competitions, and they are, they're always going to be the ones, just just however it works out. Well, now those a lot of those mixers are already pre-selected into the drawing. They're already in the competition. So all of these three mixers, you basically have a shot. Anyone has a shot getting in there. Um, so it's going to be fun. I'm not looking at anything. I'm just mixing these recipes up. I'm testing and I'm picking the best ones. There's one thing that I'm not sure of. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to announce the winners. So I might do it where I pick one winner every week, or I might do it where I pick three winners after a certain amount of time. So it's going to take me a little bit to get through all of these recipes, but um, I, I, I haven't decided on that yet, but I will let you guys know. I was supposed to make a video on this a uh, separate video and I'm still going to it's just I just haven't done the video yet so expect like a full separate video of this uh, competition so you can get all the rules you can get all the understanding um, the only rules and regulations that I know of right now are your recipes can only contain flavor art you have to make either a traditional tobacco or a flavor tobacco all of the recipes that you create are then uh, in the first round at least are going to be public right so you can't hide your recipes they're going to be public they're meant to also anyone who wants to get into DIY they can go I need a tobacco to kind of help me convert uh, into vaping I'm having a, I'm having a hard time they see the recipes they can mix that up um, but you have to only use flavor art you are allowed to use any sort of sweetener you can use vanilla you can use ethyl maltol, um, any of the enhancers um, I don't think they're gonna go so far as to like literally creating your own blends of single compound flavorings. I don't think that they're gonna allow that, but uh, just use flavor art flavorings, use whatever little enhancers that you need, whether it's AP, vanillin, ethyl maltol, or sucralose, whatever. And uh, that's pretty much it. There's no, there's no uh, rules on how many flavorings you need in a recipe. There's no, or, or how little, you know, you can use one flavoring, you know? There's no, um, yeah, there's, there's really, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it in terms of rules. Um, deadlines, I, again, I haven't set any deadlines yet. I don't think the, even the portal is set up yet over on the Flavor Art website. So just, just wait a little bit on that and you'll have more of that info. You'll have more info on it later. But I did want to let you guys know now that this is something that, um, should help it put a little flame under a bunch of y'all's asses get us mixing uh, Competitively, which is always fun a lot of really good stuff comes out of these competitions, especially when there's big money on the line I expect to see some some really interesting tobaccos now remember the goal The goal is not to create the most complex tobacco. It's not to create the most delicious tobacco It's to create the best tobacco that will convert a smoker into a vapor that's the goal and that's how I'm gonna be looking at a lot of these recipes um, obviously they're they need to be flavorful I'm gonna be testing them in mouth-to-lung devices like this Z beep and like these pod systems because that's kind of what they're designed for the design these these are products that are designed to convert smokers so remember that um, Anakin is providing a lot of this stuff for so it's going to you're going to need to know that they're not going in like a dripper wide open with a fuse clapped in it. They're going to be going in pod systems. So you're going to need to make them really flavorful. They're going to need to be able to, to go through these coils and produce that experience that you want them to produce. Anyone can really do with pretty simple traditional tobacco and get something really, really good out of a Hadley. But you put it, you know, the second you put it into a Zenith coil, you're essentially chopping off like 80% of that flavor. So you need to mix accordingly for that, right? And I think that's pretty much it off the top of my head. Dimitri and, and Phil will be judging the last round. Uh, I think Rich is too. I think those are the three judges for the last round. Rich, Dimitri, and Phil. And um, they will decide who those winners are, who, who, gets, the, who gets the one shot contract. And um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. So that's that. 
That's that. Someone asked earlier if you can get help from other mixer. I don't see why not. You know, I, I don't I don't see why not. If someone wants to team up with someone and create one recipe together, I don't I don't I don't see how that would be a problem. Oh, one here's one thing. Only US participants. O or not US, but only North American participants. So only North Americans will be able to participate and win the prize because it's they said it's the Flavor Art North America division. Only North America can essentially join this competition, which I understand is a bummer, but that's just one of their rules. I, I don't know, maybe it's a legal thing or something. So it's unfortunate, but that's that. All right, mouth to lungs. We're doing mouth to lung all day today. If you guys have any questions in the chat, feel free to tag me. I haven't been really looking at the chat. I've been chatting a bunch. Let me look. I haven't been looking at the chat. I've been chatting. How about that? Gonna really suck to test in a pod. Need 20 pods. Trust me, they they gave me all the fucking pods I ever need in my entire life. <laughs> they really did. But I think it's good, dude. I mean, I would... You can't put regular juice in a pod. It just doesn't work. You have to make pod-specific recipes. You know, I had... Uh, what did I put in here? The PB and Jam Monster. This stuff. And it just doesn't come through at all. Like you just get sweetness. You have to make specific recipes for pod systems. That's just what it is. It just is what it is. Folk Art says, so for the first round, just one recipe, a traditional tobaccos or a flavored tobacco, or can we do one of each? No, just one recipe, submit one recipe. It could be either or. Addy Tooney says, I'm bummed I couldn't meet you and see Niagara's Batcave bathroom. Yeah, I heard. I heard that you were dealing with some stuff too, man. Um, next time. I'm sure that's not going to be the only time. I'm sure it's not going to be the only time. So far, I've, I've interviewed with Favora, Flavor Art. I need to go see Capella, right? I need to go see Capella. We need to go chat with Capella, have a, have a sit down with him. Let's go. Let's go grill him. If you guys want me to go chat with Capella, let them know, tweet them, do whatever you need to do, email them. I need to make it happen. And then who's left? TFA, go talk to Linda. Go talk to who else? We can go to, I can go up to, uh, go see Frank, back up in Canada and go see Frank. Go see Walt over at Real Flavors. I like it, I, it's fun. I really enjoyed your vlog from Canada. This is the chef. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. I did work really hard on it. What was I saying before about it? I was talking about it and then I got distracted, I think, right? I think I was just saying, like, I essentially, it was essentially just me, a camera. My wife was basically filming some of the time. And um, I was able to chop it up into something that was kind of entertaining, I think. I was able to watch it all the way through. Sometimes I, I, I'll make a video and I'm just like, I don't need to fucking watch this. But that one, I was just like, all right, let me sit down and watch it now. You know what I mean? Let me let me see if it has a narrative string throughout the whole video. And I think I did a good job. The whole message of the video, which I think was portrayed well, is that Flavor Art, the people behind Flavor Art, Rich and Sean, they are vapors, right? They, 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 they started up vaping. They, they were vapors who were passionate about vaping. And then they ended up in this uh, as a as a crazy powerhouse flavoring company in North America, and I think that kind of went through. And you kind of get a sense of like these guys are a little bit flawed, but they're also uh, charming in a way. And there's a there's an interesting sort of dichotomy between like their old sort of demeanor and their old uh, ideology of industry to this new weird like hyper modern hip technology which is vaping um i think it got portrayed pretty well there's a lot of like uh vaping a lot of people in vaping and i, I don't i don't mean any offense by this guys but a lot of us are just huge nerds and i and i really want to stress that and a lot of these videos kind of want to show like they're not we're not all you know ego tough guy tattoo piercing uh, you know, cloud chasing, uh, 
Harley ride and dudes. Like we're all pretty fucking nerdy. If we're this deep into this weird niche hobby that is inhaling flavored aromas, it's just so weird and nerdy that I want, I do my best to try to emphasize that. All right. Mouth to lungs. We need to get going on this. It's already 530. Uh, Emily says, come pick me up and we will go see Frank. I can probably set that up. I'll talk to Frank. Maybe we'll go see him next. And they all don't need to be 30 minutes. There was a few things that I had to get in that video. And it was definitely Flavor Art talking about diacetyl. It was a huge contention, point of contention with Flavor Art. And I wanted, I wanted you guys to know what their entire feelings were about their stance on diacetyl and how they advocate. Um, and that, that I know for a fact that got through because it was just plain as day. They said it, you know, um, whereas someone like Frank, I would love to just to just kind of get it behind the scenes, you know, just kind of get it behind the scenes, get a, get an understanding of who he is and how they operate over there and how they got started. Nothing too deep and too serious. With Capella, I would love to to just, I don't know, man. Capella's a, to, Capella would be a long one. I would really need to think about what is the message from Capella that I would want you guys to see. And I don't really know. I don't really know Capella as like a philosophy. You know, I don't really know them underneath. The, they're just, you know, great flavors that they have. Hi Wayne, again, me again. Do you recommend use nicotine diluted in PG or VG? It doesn't really matter. I recommend PG just because you can mix it up easier. Just get it in PG. It allows you to mix it up a lot easier. Julian says, Nama Yunus versus Andra Andrade. Where's your money going? Will Anderson Silva be the Silva of old? And are you having Tim Horton's withdrawals? Maybe it was Timmy's giving you headaches. They, honestly, it was Timmy's that was stopping my headaches. I was drinking Tim Hortons and I would feel much better. Um, fucking uh, uh, Tim Hortons is the best. It's the best coffee, dude. In terms of fast food coffee, it beats Dunkin' Donuts. And Dunkin' Donuts is good. If you're in like the New England area, man, Dunkin' Donuts is pretty fucking good. But a Tim Hortons Double Double is just so much better. I don't know what it is. It sure as hell ain't their beans, you know? Maybe it's just like the cream that they use. I'm not sure what it is. My money's on Nami Yunus, but not a lot of money. Not a lot of money. She's so easy to count out. That's the problem with Nami Yunus. She's so easy to count out. She's so tiny and just like innocent and this happy-go-lucky. But I think that I think she puts on that act because she bets on herself. Like she goes to Vegas, she bets on herself, and then she plays up like, uh, you know, I'm gonna go play the piano. I don't know if you saw that last uh, embedded episode. And I think she does that to just get people to want to bet against her because it's just like, ah, Andrade is so she's just like so tougher looking that you just kind of want, I mean, just skill-wise, she's, she's great. They're both great, and it's really hard to pick. But I would go with Nami Yunus just because she has a track record, and I've counted her out both times before, and I've lost both times. I'm not very good at picking UFC fighters, so whatever I pick, pick the opposite. Uh, and then, no, I think Anderson Silva is, I think it's time for him to go, man. I think it's time for him to go. Um just the Adesanya fight was just, it was a clear showing that he's just no longer the type of, he's just not there anymore. He's just not there anymore. But then again, Adesanya is like a fucking, he's a fucking, he's Bruce Lee, you know? It's, it's, he's just like the best of the best right now. You're going to stream that fight again? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. If I do, maybe it'll just be like the last two events. Not the whole prelims again. <laughs> I was getting so tired. We ended right before that amazing fight. That was a fun one, though. All right. Um, all right. Enough, of, enough is enough. Let's get into mouth-to-lung recipes. I got my mouth-to-lung devices here. I got my Pixie. 
You might be like, Pixie, that's not a mouth to lung device. No, 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 my friends, it is. Oh no! You idiot! You dumb dumb. Come on, Google. Why does Google suck so much? All right. Here's the pixie. Move this, I don't need this right now. It has a little tiny mouth to lung hole. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like right there. We're gonna slip it on there. It's not the best mouth to lung experience, but when you're mixing for mouth to lung, you need a dripper. It, you can't use a K fun. It just takes way too much time. Get something like this. There's also a Berserker, which is like really, really good mouth to lung RDA. Um, I think I have another one somewhere up here. No, I don't have it here. I don't know where it is, but there's another mouth to lung RDA that's pretty good, but I've been using the Pixie for mouth to lung stuff. The problem that I have with this is I didn't rebuild it. There is a fuse clapped it in here, so it's just gonna be a little warm, and that's why I put it on the Bestia, because uh, I don't need it. I mean, if I need to, I can go on a regulated device and just drop it lower, but I think the Bestia outputs a pretty good power, power level that is, it's not gonna completely torch me. But uh, this is what I'm gonna be testing my recipes on. And I wanted to bring that up because I think if you're going to make mouth to lung recipes, if you like a K fun, then get yourself a mouth to lung RDA. They're really, really cheap and it'll allow you to quickly mix. You know what I mean? Um, preferably one that you can really get a pull on it, like a nice kind of like, you know what I mean? You get a nice like, kind of get like that suction there. This one is a little bit, a little bit too free flowing. You know, could be a little bit tighter, but it gives you a good idea um, of where you're going. With mouth to lung recipes, now this is my opinion. This is my opinion, and you guys might have a different opinion. Um, but to me, mouth to lung recipes cannot be complex. They can't be crazy, elaborate, complex recipes with a lot of accents, a lot of frilly stuff, a lot of decoration, a lot of foo-foo shit, you know what I mean, floating around. They need to be really, really, really dense. They need to, they need to have density in mind because you're just concentrating everything into a single point, especially in a cave fun. And it really provides such a thick saturation that it just kills any sort of complexity. So when you're creating, when you're, when you're thinking about mouth to lung, you have to think about what am I trying to portray here? Am I trying to portray something that's just a little bit too complex? It might not work in this situation. If that's the case, then pull it back. And I use the, I use the, the thing before it's like, um, a banana split with vanilla ice cream and cherries on top for mouth to lung just go with like banana go with ice cream go with cherry don't try to do too much there because you're gonna lose it all what you're gonna get is a muddled experience it's just gonna taste like really the best way to put it this is a good way to put it you take a bunch of crayons right you take a bunch of crayons and individually they have very distinct vibrant colors but once you just start coloring in everything, right? You just all put it in one spot. You take all those crayons, you put it in one spot. What's the color that comes out of it? Black, you know what I mean? Just like this deep purplish black color. That's kind of what a, a, a really tight mouth to lung, like a cake fun does. It just concentrates everything to becomes just this blackish, rich, saturated nothingness. And that's not what you want. You want to be able to really concentrate that red or that yellow or that blue. Um, you might be able to get away with some accents, but for the most part, you really want to stick to just really, really linear profiles. They don't have to be super simple, but they need to be linear, linear in flavor. This pixie's awesome, dude. The pixie is fucking awesome.
for whatever the price is, you get a mountain long RDA and a really, really good reference RDA. It's just, I who how are you going to beat this? How do you beat this? Pixie, hit me up. Let's do a dual airflow Pixie. I'll put my name on it. We'll sell a bunch of them. What recipes are we going to do today? That's tis the question. I'm putting the PB Jam Monster in here. This is a good example of flavor concentration. Concentrated flavor. By the way, shout out to Chef's Flavors for their mixed mat. I purchased this, by the way. They did not send this to me. I purchased it myself. Huh? How about that? Chef'sFlavors.co.uk. Very happy with it. Thank you. Thank you for making it. Um, I think we're going to do a custard. Custards do really well in mouth to lungs. Really, really well in mouth to lungs. Single fruits do really, really well. Um, so we'll do one of those. And then we'll try to do something a little bit. We'll try to add in some sort. We'll try to do a recipe with some sort of accent. So I can, I can try to give you a example of a, of a recipe that can do that. Specific type of recipes. Now, mind you, this was the this was Mount Talung K funds were some of the first devices I mixed for, right? Some of the first devices that I that I mixed for. It was a it was a K fund. It was a K fund, and then the orchid came out, and then I started to move a little bit more into just more airflow and stuff like that, and then I got more into just like uh just whatever, like wide open, whatever. What was the next thing? The plume veil, Derringer and all that. That's when we were able to really get a lot more accent in and we were able to get a lot more imaging and flavor stage and all that fun stuff. Um, when those RDA started to get a lot better, <laughs> really. Wide open, you get peanut butter, you get jam. It's good, sweetness. Close it down. And you get like mush. You get like mush. I can't discern anything, really. It's just, like I said, it the flavor stage goes from something that's like there, and then you just go, and then you just fucking squish it in your hands. I get mush. I get strawberry peanut butter mush. How about that? How about that for a description? All right, let's do a custard. Custards are easy. Custards are easy. Jersey Joe, I'm out selling everything and on all devices, no problem. That's the way I learned. Did not know there was there were other ways. <clears throat> There's many of ways. There's many of ways. This is my opinion. Remember, this is my opinion. This is how I've this is how I've sort of found um what works best for me and 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 my palate. You might find that you pick up accents on anything, on any, on any K fun, and you can vape rhodonite in it, and you can vape anything, and you'll pick up all that stuff. Not for me. For me, it's just like, it just squishes right down into just a single point. The crayon example is the best, the best sort of example I can give you. Um, custards are great. Unfortunately, I can no longer make a custard without Flavor Arts Premium Custard. I have to use it. I have to use it every time. We're going to use that. I'm going to show you exactly the kind of custard I make for my mouth to lung RDAs. We're going to use that. We're going to use Capella's Vanilla Custard. By the way, if you're watching Nick EVZ, I understand the idea now, now that it's sat for a little bit, a little bit longer, the idea of the sugar cookie in that recipe, because it does, I get it now, it does add not a sugar cookie flavor, but a, almost like a pudding note, like a weird dairy note in it. Almost like how cheesecake with graham crust kind of gives you like a milkshake note. 
the sugar cookie does add kind of like a pudding note specifically in that recipe. And I, th I thought it was well done. It's still a little bit, you might, you can, might even be able to drop it down even a little bit more. Uh, but I understand it. I understand why it's in there. You know? I was vaping it. I was vaping it uh, last night. And I was just like, okay, I, I can see why the sugar cookie seems to be necessary here because it does kind of add a little bit extra depth to the finish of the vanilla custard flavor. All right, we're going to go vanilla custard. I mean, you can essentially just, just put custard premium vanilla custard in there or even just vanilla custard in there uh like six seven percent a little ethyl maltol and you're good if you want a good custard for your mouth to lung like i said keep things simple you're probably really all you're probably really well off with just that but we're not going to do just that we're going to add a little bit more All right, we're back. Wayne, you must try the Scotia tank. The Scotia tank. You get what you pay for. Was it a high a hemo tank? One of these hemo devices? Did Richard really give you a liter of Flavor Arts Premium Custard? No, <laughs> no, I wish. I mean, they could, they would probably give it to me if I, if I begged them for it, but uh, I don't, I, I don't need a liter, I don't need a liter of it. That's a lot. Maybe I should have, huh? Maybe I do need a liter. Still waiting on my haster. You're gonna be waiting a long time, buddy. Scott says much of what I mix is for my Cthulhu haster. Optional airflow restrictors. Oh yeah, it did have the restrictors. I I, I remember that. It kind of had like the top air the top airflow thing re restrictor. I remember that. All right, 
let me uh, bring up all the flavors here. Plush noses. We're going to call this plush noses. All right. I'm going 3% on there. Two percent on there. You could go higher. You could definitely go higher on your on your custards. In fact, I'm gonna go three percent. Um yeah, you could definitely go you could definitely re if mouth to lung is just like crank it crank it through the through the roof. Not so much like a pod system. Where you don't want to be hitting like 20, 25% total flavoring. You want to just a little bit over the curve. You know what I mean? Um, I have some butterscotches here. Some nut, some toffee. I usually just go real simple, just like butterscotch custard. But I'm thinking it might be too much dap. If we go with like natural butterscotch. You know what I'm saying? So I also got some graham cracker, almond. But they're all in a very, a very similar wheelhouse. We'll go TFA graham cracker. Okay. I like graham cracker cleared with that. Uh, I have butter, but our brown sugar extra. We could throw a touch of that in there, but I think I'm gonna leave that out. It might be a little too astringent. I have some almond. Let's throw some almond in there. I'm gonna do a quarter of a percent of almond. I don't really wanna taste it too much. English toffee, maybe a touch of toffee. Or maybe we go flavor art butterscotch, which to me is more. Mm. Let's see here. Maybe we just go with hazelnut. Half a percent. Let's throw some sweetness in there. Now sweetener, super sweet in particular, is not always necessary in mouth to lungs because of just how concentrated the vape is. It's not always necessary. It's never necessary, honestly. It's it's never really necessary, but um, more so in mouth to lung devices, just because it, it's just so concentrated. There's no real need to mess around with it. Oh, I don't wanna block the Mr. Goodhead. All right. So, Super simple kind of like nutty custard flavor. 
I'm gonna make 15 mils. Um, everything kind of in the same genre of, of tone, if that makes sense, right? I don't have one super bright flavor and then one super deep flavor. So they all kind of have the same tone. Is tone, what's the word for tone, but in flavor? Is there a word? Do you know? Dude, let's do split cam. Let's fucking split cam and I don't think we've ever done split cam before. Is there a word for tone but for flavor? I'm not sure. How cool is this, huh? I mean, who else is split cam in two 4K cameras? in their live stream. This is the stuff I'm talking about, dude. You come here to this channel and there's such a demand, there's such an expectation of high quality content that anything lesser than perfection is a disappointment. It's a gift and a curse. Like how arrogant I can be sometimes. I can I can crank it up a notch if you want. This is what I'm talking about, dude. Only in DIY, right? I don't get it. Why don't ever, why doesn't every vapor learn how to make their juice? Why would you want to be stuck vaping some crap juice? that you probably don't even like all day. And the only way to get a different juice is if you go down to your shitty shop. When you could just sit and hang out for a weekend and have like a ton of mixes for the weekend. Even that day. Even if you want something new for that day. What the fuck is that smell? It smells like a hot dog. Maybe someone's eating a hot dog out there. Someone emailed me recently and they were saying how they were putting vinegar in their e-liquid to cut the sweetness of the VG. And I found that very interesting. I've never heard that before. I've heard of putting apple cider vinegar in tobaccos to essentially lower the pH level, but not actual vinegar to cut the sweetness of the VG I, I I thought that was very interesting I've never heard of that before but they were essentially wondering how to get kill all the sweetness from their VG and I was saying like your VG shouldn't be that sweet I don't know what kind of VG you're using it's just like lightly naturally sweet but I wouldn't call it sweet by any means especially not the fucking juice that I vape know what I mean Know what I'm saying? But yeah, don't put vinegar in your juice. I don't know if there's any science out there on inhaling vinegar. That might not be something. Well, I guess there's no, there's no science on anything about... On anything involved in what we're doing. So, have at it, I guess. See, this is very simple. Oh, dude, my cameras are synced up. Very, very simple. You might be asking, why didn't I put a fruit in here? Why not top it off with some strawberry or some blueberry? 
You know what you you know what a fruit probably would work in here would be like banana. Banana's pretty bold. Banana works in like every any situation. Strawberry might get a little too lost. What else? What else goes good with a custard in terms of fruit? Blueberry custard, I guess. You might be able to get away with a blueberry. But why not just go real thick vanilla egg butter? In my case, a little bit of a nut. Nice video with flavor art. Well done. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. Blood from her. Ooh, didn't mean that. Tone depth. You downscaled the 1080p, so I have done that a lot. <laughs> Actually, this camera is 4K, which gets downscaled to 1080 through the YouTube algorithm, or just, or actually, uh, rather, through my OBS system. That camera is not 4K. I, th I th for some reason, thought it was a different camera, but it's a 1080p camera. Can you guys read that at all? Even if you can just barely read it, can you even see it? I can't quite tell. Hold on, let me look. I don't want to have something up. Yeah, I guess you can kind of see it. It's just there for decoration, you know? We have a ton of news too. Mmm. All right. So with the custard. Thick, rich, eggy. You get a little bit of like a nuttiness to it. I gotta slow down with the diacetyl, man. It's making my throat itchy these days. See, I have such a tendency to wanna direct lung this. Very nice though. With your custards and your mouth to lungs, let them sit a little bit. The more they sit, the eggier they get, the more rich they get, the better they do in a mouth to lung. There's probably a certain point, in fact, where I would recommend like a good traditional, almost like a Grant's custard style vape, be in a mouth to lung because of just how much richness you can pull out of it. You know what I mean? I don't know how long that takes, I don't know the best the best amount of time before that sort of kicks in, but you do want to give it a little bit of time and then we'll we'll direct long it. This will be good on a direct long as well, but might as well. Very, very nice. Okay. Now onto a fruit. Let's do a fruit.
with fruit, same idea. Very vibrant. You want you want vibrancy. You want vibrance. Is vibrancy a word? You want vibrance. Wayne eats donuts and calls it researching. <laughs> Does that mean my donuts are tax write-offs? <clears throat> Ryan says, hashtag two weeks. That's a two weeks is a good amount of time. Any more is just kind of flourish. On a cell phone, it's nearly impossible to read. Yeah, I can see that being a problem. Let me, let me zoom it in. I don't understand. I guess I'm gonna need like an OLED TV to really make it pop, right? How's that, is that a little bit better? Can't really see the full recipe. I just want you to just, it's just decoration, but I don't want it to be just like a big white blob above my head. I'm gonna have to figure the TV thing out. Um, okay. Kane says, cap sweet guava for mouth to lung. Yeah, I was actually thinking of like a POG recipe. <laughs> POG recipe. I find like mouth to lung you can get you can get a good banana in a mouth to lung. I don't know anything like super watery and juicy. I feel isn't the best for mouth to lung. Some people really like watermelon in a mouth to lung. I personally not the biggest fan of watermelon as, as a mouth to lung. I, I rather direct lung that one. It's just taste, man. Tastes are so different, huh? But um, to me, more like a citrusy, like a sharp, like a gummy, like a like a bold sort of fruit, they do best. So that's what we're gonna try to do. So I was thinking like a POG sort of mix. Let's do it. This is fun. I like when I press that button and nothing happens. There we go. Tasty folds. <laughs> Tasty folds. We could do a POG, passion, orange, guava fruit, right? Guava fruit, what am I talking about? Passion fruit, orange, guava. Why does it look like I have a comb over? Is it time for a haircut already? All right. Flavor Arts Passion Fruit. I was gonna say too, also mint. Mint, mouth to lung, ah. Mint, menthols, ice, anything like that.
think we go flavor arts passion fruit flavor arts royal orange sweet guava and i was thinking maybe some dragon fruit but it's kind of i don't know it's a little too watery i think for this recipe Definitely sweet guava. How much passion fruit am I using here? 2%. Do I use royal orange? I mean, I really like the regular orange. We'll do flavor art orange. Or do we do blood orange? Let's do blood orange. Blood orange, passion fruit, sweet guava. Let's do 1% of Flavor Arts Mandarin. And then Super Sweet. Now, I'm thinking this recipe you're not gonna kind of get that whole, like with POG, how it kind of has that layering that you can taste, but this should have a really nice sort of concentrated fruit flavor. It's almost like a, just like, just like a tropical fruit mix. But again, they're all of the same genre, same tone depth, the same tone. Don't want to go too, too crazy on the tones. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on now. 2% of Flavor Arts Blood Orange. Flavor Arts Passion Fruit. You could use Flavors here. Flavor has an excellent passion fruit as well. And you could use Flavor West Blood Orange, obviously. Which is better? Is Flavor Arts better or is Flavor West better? I'm not exactly too sure. I don't think I can answer that right now. I would really need to kind of put them head to head, but they're both really good. I got 3% of sweet guava. I like guava, okay? It's the boldest of all the flavors. 
so we might as well put it front and center and then just kind of brighten it with all the other stuff and then the, the, the mandarin why does uh, all the flavors call it F.A. Tanger when it's not? It's F.A. Mandarino. Maybe he got it mixed up. Shout out to all the old heads out there that bought tons of Flavor Arts Mandarin for my uh, old creamsicle recipe, which I, which I still think is... One of the best creamsicles in the game. Sweeten it up. Let's nick it. Mouth to lung. One, one milligram of nicotine, probably not the best you might want to go a little, a little bit more on your neck don't be afraid you're gonna be vaping a lot less of it that's for sure but since I vape a lot because I'm constantly mixing I just stick to one milligram do a little twist smells just like POG just how I remember it. I don't exactly know what my my original POG recipe is based on the uh, Gary Wandry's recipe. Many people have mixed that up. Many, many people have mixed that up and have told me how much they've enjoyed it. And I, I thought that was gonna be the case. Naked's uh, POG was very popular. I mean, imagine buying that stuff all the time and then going online and seeing that recipe and being like, holy shit. It's only like a few ingredients and then I can literally save 98% of my vaping budget and spend it on like sandwiches and shit. Miss those days. I wish I could relive that moment. I wish I could relive that moment. I'm going to do this right in front of you. I think it looks cool. How restrictive is the day one? It's not that restrictive. I, I mean, it's... I don't think it's that restrictive. Thinking of getting one. It's a great RDA. I use it on the... I used to use it on my plug a lot. But then I've since just put the Hadeon on there. But uh, it's a great RDA. I haven't done like a full analysis, review, breakdown of it. I think I have actually. Maybe I have. I think I just kind of reviewed it. But after you spend a, you know, a few months with an RDA, then that's when you get the real review. We need more, maybe maybe I'll do that. Would you guys be interested in that? Like real real late reviews on products? Just so you get like the real idea of the product. Like the, like a, like, how about I review uh, like the recoil, you know what I mean? Something like that. I spent months, over almost a year on that, with that product. Ooh. Ooh. That's good. I don't know how it's going to work dripping right on top of my uh, custard here. What about index instead of tone? I don't know if that works the same way. I don't know if that would get across the same way. Because someone hears tone, they know, they know. Maybe 
I think it's so much like sound for some reason. It's just so similar to sound to me. That that's just how I like pair pair up how I can taste things. How I can taste things is I pair that up with sound so I can get that out to you in a way where you can understand it. And to me, I think sound is the easiest way to do that. Because even with sight, it's it's a little bit difficult to sort of, for me at least. I don't know, maybe I'm more auditory than I am visual. But like when you see a certain shade or tone of a color, you get a certain vibe from it. The same kind of goes with flavors. Flavors have like certain shades and tones that kind of fit there. And I know what you mean by index, but I also don't know if it translates the same. I don't know if it's as easy as a tra uh, as a bridge as tone. All right, let's drip some of this. Let's put it on the MTL setting. Pretty damn good. But to be honest, I do think that it 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 would just work. Maybe it's just me because I, maybe because I just like open lung or direct lung so much more. But I'm always just like, eh, if if I just opened it up a little bit more, it'd be better. We'll do tobacco next. Oh man, that is so good. That is so good. Did I put the sweetener in here? I don't think I did. I don't know, maybe I did. Maybe I did. Let me see the difference between direct long and mouth long on this. Well, you know what? Let me get it off the best of you. Ow. Let me put it on our Man, that is so tasty. Whoever thought of like POG as a profile, kudos to you, man. It works so well. Passion orange guava fruit works so well together. Whoever thought of that, you're a fucking genius. It, it really does work so well together. There we go. We just need a little extra power. Maybe the batteries are dying. This would go great with some ice. All right, you guys ready for this one? Is that how they do it? Oh. Oh. 
There you go. There's one for you. A push. Should we do a jelly? I need to run for that one. Okay, let's do a tobacco. We got two deliciosos in the bank. All you mouth to lung heads, there's two for you. Let's drip the custard on this on this one too. I'm feeling some custard today. I'm feeling some custards. This is what I'm talking about with DIY, dude. You feel a little custardy? Fucking just mix it up. You know? Just mix it up. Stop complaining. Passion fruit custard. I wonder if that would be good. Just thinking out loud here. All right. Um, if I ain't got passion fruit, can you suggest a replacement? Try. If you ain't got passion fruit, try a pineapple. Try um grapefruit. Try grapefruit, try pineapple, try mango, mango, orange, guava. That works. I did a, a, a POM recipe once that was really good. You could try um, dragon fruit, even though I'm not exactly sure if that'll work best with mouth to lung, but just try it. Not going to hurt. Um, yeah, there you go. There's four, three or four. All right. You should try with Flavora Pink Guava. Yeah, Pink Guava is tricky to me. Because sometimes you mix it up and it's pretty good. And other times it's like... A, it's a pretty interestingly weird flavor. Sometimes it's like a dirty flavor. In this specific recipe, it probably worked pretty good. That's what you can call it. Super late reviews. <laughs> this tobacco and almond work. Certainly does. It certainly does. Yeah, the, the quality is so much better on Twitch. All right, okie dokie. New recipes, the last one, and we'll get get out of here, enjoy our weekends. I have so much writing to do for next week. All you members, get ready, because I'm pounding you with a lot of stuff tomorrow next week. I don't need to, I don't need a recipe name. MTL tobacco, I guess. All right. First thing I'm doing. We'll use holy ROI four. At 4%. I want it dirty. Has anyone done a root beer RY4 yet? Has anyone done a root beer RY4 yet?
You're gonna make Max's head ep- explode. He's n- he never stops talking about root beer RY4. Has he done one? If you don't have DIY flavor shack RY4, TFIs, TFAs will work just fine. I think someone said that it's it's, it's RY it's not RY4. It's what do they say? Who told me this? I forget who it was. They said it was like espresso or something. Cappuccino or espresso? I forget, man. I'm thinking maybe in root beer RY4. I don't even know if that would even work. Try to get anything past root beer. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Pavor's root beer is so fucking good. Not if he, not sure if he finished, but he has one going. Interesting. It's probably pretty difficult. I won't do that now. Maybe we'll save that for another show. I can imagine the winter greening and all that other stuff clashing with the caramel. To me, tobaccos in mouth to lungs are the best. They're the best profile. Um, they just work so well in mouth to lung. It just the way that it feels like it just works so fucking well. It, it's obviously meant for tobaccos to emulate that cigarette or that cigar or whatever. But um, yeah, that's just that's. That's just what it is, man. If you really like Mount Tulung, you probably already have a treasure trove of recipes that involve tobacco that you enjoy. Now you can just go ahead and mix Cardinal, which is this plus, I believe, Red Burley, right? Just Fear's recipe. I don't want to steal it too much. I want it a little dirtier, a little deeper. Maybe we'll go with RY4 at four and then cured tobacco at a half. Um. And then I'm actually thinking oatmeal cookie for a little bit of like a grape, like a little bit of like a fig grape note. And that's it. And then I'm gonna use a little ethyl maltol And then a drop of MTS, Vape Wizard. So I guess that would be like 0.15% or something like that. Now what Vape Wizard does, it's essentially kind of blends everything up, but it also, um, it's just like smooths things out a little bit. If you were to think of it like sandpaper, it kind of like smooths down some of the rough edges. It's great for blending purposes. I haven't used it in a long time. 
but this would be a good a, a good recipe to use it in. I don't I don't want really any of the the rough edges from the oatmeal cookie in here, so we'll just put a drop in there. See what it does. Ethel Montal would just help fluff it up. All right, we're good. Oh no. Don't be afraid to use enhancers. Just like any other flavoring, just need to know when and how to use them. I'm gonna beat Max on this RY4 root beer thing. I can imagine it probably takes more than just Flavor root beer and RY4. Just kind of thinking about it, it's probably Probably best to try to like craft your own root beer and then somehow work in an RY4 or some sort of tobacco into whatever caramel syrup soda base that you have. And then the winter green or whatever, whatever that note is. Holy grill, how much oatmeal cookie? 0 0.16. You guys like the split camera? If you like to split camera, give me a plus one and I'll keep it around. If not, I'll, I'll remove it. That should be a fun one, huh? Yeah, 0 0.15 in 15 mils is about a drop. In 30 mils is probably like two drops. Yeah, it's a little, a little extra. For those wondering about my Mac, I, uh, I basically tried to re reformat the hard drive. And when I did so, the same problem was happening. And then essentially I had to delete everything on the hard drive and then reformat it manually. And I was able to get it, get it working again. Now, that would have been a problem a couple years ago but ever since the, the, the great deletening, where I deleted all thousands of my recipes off of my hard drive, uh, I now do everything in the cloud. So I just started it right back up, bada bing, bada boom. And it was all right there. I mean, I literally could have bought a new computer and I would have had all of my stuff. Save all of your stuff to the cloud. Multiple cloud uh, solutions. I have a backup of a backup in the cloud. I, I can't, imagine if that happened to me now. Oh my God, if I lost all of my stuff, I'd have to go out of business. I don't got time for you. I thought I put you in fucking do not disturb.
All right. The delete, the old deleting. See some plus ones. Oh, we have the root beer RY4. Let's see it. Favor root beer, vanilla for pipe, sweet and smoky tobacco, native tobacco. I mean, that looks more like a root beer tobacco. Huh? More so than an RY4, but I am curious now. I'm curious to just the native tobacco with the root beer. I kind of want to try it. I can see the vanilla for pipe kind of working in there too. Interesting, huh? All right, this is our last recipe, guys. Oh my lord. RY4 with some cured and some oatmeal. Yeah, tobaccos and RY4s just work so much better mouth to lung than anything else. Custards is it cl custards are close though. It's the kind of vape that you know. This is like a beer vape, you know. You got you got your beer, you got your dinner or whatever, or your after dinner beer or you know your. Whatever you're doing, like, it's just like that sort of relaxing by the fire style vape and where you're not chucking anything. You just want like small, almost stealth style vapes where it's just like real quick, kind of like look around, make sure no one sees you. Get some caramel, some nuttiness, some tobacco with some grape grape fig flavor <clears throat> that passion fruit's still kind of coming through Very, very nice. So there's three mouth to lung recipes for you. One custard, nut, a, a nutty custard, very simple, very rich. Let it sit for a little bit. Uh, same with the tobacco. Let the tobacco RY4 sit a little bit. <clears throat> Let it develop. Um, and then the, um, the fruit one you can just rip right to town. And if you want ice, I would definitely ice the fruit one if you like ice. The passion fruit and orange just do really well with ice and guava as well. So, um, yeah, that's the, hopefully you get a good understanding for mouth to lung 
if you haven't mixed the recipes for Mount Along yet. You don't want to go too off the walls. It's kind of a single single linear profile with maybe some sort of uh, some sort of tweak to it that kind of adds just a little bit of depth. But just remember line linearity, where you're not trying to get anything over on the sides. Everything kind of just comes down the pike. So in there, you can basically get like a nice kind of full vape through it with something on the finish. That's that's basically all you have to work with with mouth to lung. Um, any sort of like accents that involve any sort of flavor stage, they will get compressed inside and sometimes get lost within the profile. So you just want to just keep a keep a close eye on your goal and try to just get right there. I mean, even in this, even in the case for the the POG, I probably could have just taken out the orange and just had the passion guava, and that would have still given me somewhat of a similar profile, but even more saturation. Um, same with the RY4, just taking out the, the oatmeal cookie. You know, that's just there just to add a little bit of like a raisin on the finish. But if I wanted more saturation on and focus on the caramel and the RY4 and the tobacco, then the then you just pop out the oatmeal cookie and then the custard same with the nuts pop the nuts out just go straight for custard and you're gonna get more saturation um i shouldn't say saturation. i should say i should say just more flavor in general because it's both saturation vibrance presence all of that has they all come come into play there you, you just want to make sure that uh you're mixing accordingly and that you're not going too off the wall. You're not going too complex. You're not going too crazy. Once you do, you just, you know, remember it's all, it's all a balancing act. It's all a balancing act. So those are my recipes. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you enjoyed the show. Stay, um, remember to be, to follow me over on my Instagram at DIY or die vaping. That way, any sort of news that we have about the mixathon for Kind Ground, and um, and the and the competition, you're staying updated, and that way you can get all the information that you need. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have all. I don't have everything right now. So you just just stay stay tuned, and you will see all of that stuff. Just follow me. That way, you can have all the written stuff for you, and you can you know save it to your whatever, so you have it for yourself. All right, where's your recipe? I will put the recipes over on all the flavors. I'll name them mouth to lung, this, this, and this. Uh, that way you guys can see them if you wanna try them out. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next week. I'll see you guys Monday. Monday, um, you'll probably get a video in the meantime just for the uh, competition that way it has all of the rules all in one place if you ever need to reference that video for to, to understand where we're going as soon as I get the date for um, when I need to get those recipes in then I'm gonna put that video out and then we'll get started on this competition to make the switch competition thank you for flavor art for putting that all together and um, until then I'll see you Monday keep mixing everyone much love bye bye